now ready to work on our files page. So one of the first things that we want to do here is uh, we want to replace the side nav with the uh, partial that we had created before. So to do that, let's go to elements, let's go to partials, and let's just throw our sidebar anywhere onto the page here. And then once that's done, go ahead and click on that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use our keyboard shortcut of Control X to cut that. And again, notice in the bottom right it says cut in clipboard. We'll come back over to the sidebar that comes with the page. And we'll go up on our div block level until we have the main block selected. And then we'll click the three dots here and we'll go ahead and hit replace. There we go. That looks good. All right, now let's call this, instead of tables, let's go ahead and call this files. And we'll change this to say file list. list. And again, remember with a table, we only need the one row. So let's go ahead and just clean that up here. We'll just delete that and we'll just click anywhere inside of this row and just select the table row in the breadcrumb area down here and hit delete. So that looks good. Next what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to change uh, this row into a repeating group but the first thing that we want to do before we do that is we actually want to create our backend actions so that we can go ahead and uh, load this row up with actual files. So let's go ahead and do that now. So what we'll want to do is we'll click our backend actions. We'll click on new action. And we'll name this get files. Then we'll add a trigger of endpoint. And we're going to create a variable here. We want to get a collection of files. So we'll call this get files. The model is going to be model of files. And let's go ahead and hit save here. Okay. Now that we got that, we want to add a query variable down here. So let's click this. Uh, this is going to be a number. And we're going to call this a client ID. And here's why we want to do this. Basically, uh, the way that we have it set up right now, it would return all files. But we only want the customer to be able to put files in or see files that they have. So that's why we're going to filter by this client ID. So once we created that query variable, we can go into our get files variable that we created just a second ago. And this time we're going to go into the where clause and we'll say where ID, uh, where customer ID is equal to, we'll do that endpoint client ID number. And then hit save. Now, if we build that, now that it's built, we'll hit run action so that we can test it. Now, here we can put in a client ID of, let's do one and then hit run and we get a code back of 200 and we're getting back this data null and the reason why we're getting back data null if you ever see this is because we forgot to set a response variable so I purposely did that because I want to see I want you to see in real life what will happen if you forget to put the response variable in after you test it so to fix that let's go back to our triggered by endpoint and here's the response variable and let's put that into the get files. Let's rebuild our code and then let's write, rerun that action. We'll put in client ID of one again and hit run. And this time we are getting back data null but that is because there actually is nothing in our tables. So to verify that, let's go into our tables, let's go into files, and let's just go ahead and we'll add a record here. So we'll just hit add attachment, 
and we'll just pick something from uh, our computer here. We'll just do this. Okay, and we'll append a customer ID of one. So now we do have one record in our database. Let's go back to our endpoint here and let's rerun this action here. And you can see we're actually returning a response, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So now we can go back to our pages. And let's go ahead and create a front end action We're going to rename this action and we're going to call this get files. And we're going to add an event. This is going to be the run endpoint event. We're going to select that endpoint that we just created, which is get files. And here we have that query variable where we want to pass in the uh, client ID. So we'll go to uh, current user and we'll get the ID from there. Hit OK. Hit save. Now we need to add a response as. So we'll call this get files as and then get files response. We'll hit save. Next, we're going to go back to our page, and we're going to click on our variables. We're going to add a new at variable. Uh, this is to store the uh, files that are going to get returned by our action. So let's call this uh, client files. We'll change this type to a collection and we'll choose files as the model. Hit save. Now we're going to go back to our front end action that we created, our get files. And we're going to add an event. And this is going to be our check to make sure um, that it's actually returning a valid response. So let's go to flow control condition. Let's add in condition. And here we're going to go to event get files response so this is our response code from our endpoint is equal to and then we'll just type our success code that's going to make sure that it's only going to perform the next action uh, if it's actually getting a valid response and hit save then we'll come back to our condition I do like to put in a description so you can say uh, verify successful retrieval of files. And that gives you just a little better idea of what you're doing here. Click the three dots and we're going to add an event inside. Now for this we're going to set that variable that we just created. We're going to go to set field. We're going to hit variable and we're going to go to our client files collection hit OK and then the value is going to be our event get files as collection and hit OK don't forget to press save and then we can return back to our home page next what we want to do is we want to come into our div block here where our files are we're going to go to the lightning bolt up at the top we're going to add a new front end action our trigger is going to be component din mount. And then we're going to pick that workflow that we just created, get files. Now that we have that, it's time to change this row that we have in our table to a repeating row. So to do that, you're going to select inside of the table. You're going to choose the table row in the breadcrumbs. That'll select the whole row. We'll click the gear icon and we're going to change that to repeating with and we'll do variable and then we're going to search for our files which is our client files collection and hit OK and that's actually going to 
return back that list of files for this particular customer. Next, let's go ahead and change a couple things on this table. Uh, let's change this to say file name. We don't need company position. We can leave creation date. So to make changes to these uh, headers, what we need to do is we need to actually select the main table. So we just click anywhere and then in the breadcrumbs here we'll go down the table, click the gear icon, and then as you, you see it starts at column 0, so column 0 is file name, column 1 is company, column 2 is position. We don't need those so let's just hit the delete and that will leave the creation date. Let's add one more column and we'll call this one actions. And then let's go ahead and delete that. Uh, in this case, we're going to add uh, two buttons. So let's go into our elements. Let's search for button. We're going to call this download. And then we'll add another button. And we're going to call this delete. That way they'll have the option of uh, deleting the button or downloading the file. Um, now you'll see there's not a lot of space there so what we can do is we can come over to the paintbrush up here. We can go to um, spacing and then we can add a little bit more bit of margin here to the side. We'll just do 20. That looks good.